Welcome to XYZ's definitive guide on setting up artwork for print. No, this isn't the same as the other ones. This is the guide that you're actually going to listen to. So we understand if you've never printed anything before, then setting up bleed is a completely alien concept. So first of all, we're going to quickly show you why we need it. And then we're going to get straight into showing how to add it onto your artwork. So why do we actually need 3mm bleed? Well, you might be printing an A5 book, but we'll print your artwork on larger sheets. So we might get two, four, or even eight of your pages on a larger sheet. We then stack a pile of sheets underneath the guillotine and trim them down to the size of your finished book. The blade might come down one to two mil out over such a large number of sheets. So if you haven't got any extra around the edge of your artwork, all that's gonna end up around the edge is the white of the paper. Adding the extra three mil means that if the blade misses slightly, you've got more of your artwork around the edge to give us leeway when it comes to trimming. Right, so let's start by opening up InDesign and creating a new file. So we go File, New Document, and then here we choose the page size that we'd like for our finished book. So we'll go for A5, which is 148 millimeters wide, 210 millimeters high, and we'll do this example with 48 pages. Now, crucially at the bottom here, we need to add three millimeters into the four bleed boxes. That adds this extra red margin around the edge of our page. So we can see it here all the way around the edge, and then we're inside that, we have the magenta line, which is the trim edge of the page. So we're gonna choose the rectangle tool here from the toolbar, and we're gonna start dragging from the top left-hand corner of the bleed all the way down to the bottom right-hand corner of the bleed. Now we can see when we do that, if we look at the measurements, that this box starts on minus three millimeters on the X and minus three on the Y. So it's starting three mil outside of the trim edge. And you can see that the dimensions, when we compare them to the A5, is therefore six mil bigger on the width and the height than A5, because you've got three mil bleed on the left, the right, the top, and the bottom. If we were to drag the rectangle tool back in three millimeters, so that it starts on zero, zero, the trim box size, you can see that the measurements then are 148 by 210. That's not what we want here, so we're gonna drag it back out again. So our image box that we're gonna put our background color in or our picture in is three mil bigger on each side. We're going to then go to Control D or File Place and we're going to choose an image from our desktop to drop into this image box. We then go to the white arrow tool and the white arrow tool lets us move the content and resize the content within the box. So the black arrow tool for moving the box itself and the white arrow tool for moving the content within the box. So if you hold Shift and you drag one of the corner handles, it will scale the image in proportion, i.e. it won't make it wider than it needs to be or higher than it needs to be. It will move the image in proportion. So we have the image now filling the whole page and the bleed around the edge. I'm going to do an example here of what it looks like without this. So we're going to copy the image and put it onto page two here. We're going to drag the image box in. And again, now we can see the image is 148 by 210 millimeters. So this doesn't include bleed. Okay. You can see it stops at the trim edge of the page rather than on page one above, it goes into the bleed area. These same principles apply whether you are setting up artwork for the cover of the book, the inside pages, or even a leaflet, a postcard, or a poster. You always need to add three mil bleed if any of your content goes to the edge of the finished trim sheet. Of course, it doesn't have to fill the whole page. So let's do a quick example here on page three where we've just got an image in the middle of the page. So we're gonna need bleed on the left and the right hand side, but because we have a white border above and below, we don't need to worry about bleed at the top and the bottom. So let's drop in a landscape image here. Um, you can use the measurements tab and you can scale uh, mathematically using the percentage there, or for a bit more control, you can use the white arrow tool and you can scale it using the arrow tool. So here we've just dropped a nice landscape image in on the center of the page and given it bleed on the left and the right hand side so it goes to that outer red line on the InDesign file. That is the crucial bit. We're now going to go up to File, Export. You can name your file, you can save it onto your computer, you choose Adobe PDF Print from the bottom box and then it brings up the export settings. We choose PDF X1A 2001 from the top one. We choose Pages all pages so it exports the whole document 
And this is the next crucial thing on the marks and bleeds menu, tick crop marks and the four bleed boxes should all say three millimeters. That means when you export your file to PDF, it will include the bleed that we've added on the InDesign file around the edge. Opening up the PDF here in Acrobat, you can see that the image extends beyond the crop marks and that is our three mil bleed. On page two, it doesn't extend beyond the crop marks. You can see it stops right on them, which means we have no extra part of your image when we come to trim the pages. Page three here, where we did the landscape image, you can see that we have the extra three mil on the left and the right hand side. And following that, we have all of the other 48 pages, which obviously we haven't filled for this example. So going back to page one, you can see your image extends beyond the crop marks on the PDF, and that is exactly how we need it. You can then go ahead and send that to us on WeTransfer, listing your print spec, where we should deliver the job to, and we'll get it booked in for you and printed and back to you in the next few days.